Hey, everybody. Welcome to the MBA Heat Podcast. I'm Karen Bryant. What's up, everyone? Alan Joban here. So Alan is not here with us in person because uh, you're recovering from surgery. I know people can see the band-aids there, so maybe um, we want to give everybody an update. But first and foremost, like you look, you know, pretty much, I mean, granted, not totally, but almost back to normal. It doesn't look <laughs> like it took too much out of you. Yeah, I, I'll take it. I'll take it, Karen. Um, it, honestly, like overall, my assessment since the surgery, I had the surgery on Tuesday, so it's been, you know, one day shy of a week. Um, but I'm healing good. I'm healing uh, the pain isn't that bad. The healing is going well. I'm up moving around. Um, but yeah, it's just, it is what it is. I can't, I'm, I'm restricted from driving and basically kind of doing anything because you can't drive. I'm not supposed to ride in a car either for about two weeks. So all I do is sit around my house and it, it's taking its toll on me just being bored. You know, I go on a walk around the neighborhood right. with my mom. I feel like I'm like waving at the older women in the neighborhood now that I see on, on regular right. occasions now. So you know, I, I I know that even when I'm healthy, when I'm not fighting, I'm not I'm not uh, made for like a normal lifestyle. Right, right. I'm I'm feeling very very older and, and normal right now. So all in all, the he- the healing is going pretty well. Um, I got to go see the doctor and check on things this week, and hopefully get cleared in a couple of days to start leaving the house. But um, it's it's just a slow process. But again, the replace the the, the, the surgery that I had is only supposed to be uh, three to four months or so rather than the nine-month surgery that they thought it might have been. So I'm, I'm eager watching those fights, which we'll get into. They were amazing fights. And um, it was one of those cards that, like, had me thinking, God, like, like it, it, it lit that fire in me. You know, it made me jealous that I wasn't a part of it. But healing good, and I can't wait to get back in there. Cool. And it was it was a bulge disc for people who don't know what it was, right? It was a disc in your neck. Exactly. I had pretty much two, two, two bulge discs or whatever you want to call it and, uh, and, uh, and, and a pinched nerve. And so we did a disc replacement on one of those discs, opened up the nerve, got a lot of the feeling back in my hand again. And so now it's just letting this heal up, uh, the incision, the disc, and then letting the nerve kind of get its strength yeah. again. So uh, I look forward to going into physical therapy. Like every time I'm injured, like physical therapy is a fun thing because you're sitting around doing nothing and now you can <laughs> actually – work on improving the injury that you have and getting stronger and getting back your mobility and everything right. again. So I'm, I'm looking forward to probably starting physical therapy next week, and uh, I can't wait. Cool. Very cool. Well, you know, one of the guys, uh, Tyron Woodley, of course, the champ had an injury before. He had a shoulder injury, and so he was out for a while, you know, and, um, you know, one thing about his injury that he was saying that gave him time to work on all these other things, right? If he couldn't yeah. use this arm, this shoulder, it gave him a lot of time to work on other stuff, and, you know, going yeah. into the fight on Saturday, I thought it was a little bit crazy. I mean, more than a little bit crazy um, that Tyron was the underdog. You know, by the end of the day, when it got down yeah. to fight time it was a very close line uh i might even still have my notes here yeah at at fight day it was t wood as a plus 100 and darren was a minus 130 so it was really close but still to me you know tyron is such a a great fighter that uh and you know a champion defending for the fourth time like to me it seemed crazy that he was given underdog status anyway but i get it you know darren had momentum and i understand you know i understand why the vibe could have led toward him uh as a favorite that said you know tyron came out just blasting um you know I know he looked leaner. One of the things we were talking about before this fight was, yeah. you know, if it went deeper, would all that muscle be harder for Tyron? I felt like both guys came in uh, with a lot less muscle. It was almost like they both knew, yeah. you know, it could go a while. They both seemed a little bit more lean in there to me. Mm-hmm. But um, I just really, I can't say I didn't expect that from Tyron because I know how powerful he is. I guess I didn't expect it like right out the gate like that, that fast. So I was, I was quite impressed. Um, didn't like the ref breaking them up in the clinch too quickly. I thought that was not cool. You could tell they were working. Um, but that Mm. said, you know, the second round, Darren Till, I don't know, man, that dude can take it. He's got a crazy chin. I don't know what you want to call it, but, um, it just looked like, uh, that they were in two different levels in terms of fighters. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, uh, Tyron Willie looked like it was one of his one of his better performances yeah. that we've seen out of him in a while. It was nice to see. Uh, it was refreshing to see. Um, both men, I agree, did look a lot leaner. Uh, Tyron Tyron looked very lean. Um, I mean, you saw all throughout fight week. Uh, we're used to seeing Tyron like busting out of his clothes <laughs> on the set with you yeah. on UFC now, and then all week it's like he was kind of like being swallowed up by his uh, Reebok gear. Yeah, totally. it was, and it was I think it was more the size of Darren Till standing next to Tyron Willie that made him, oh, lost you for a second. Hold on one second, guys. 
Uh, in the voicemail. Sorry, oh. I was getting a call right there. You guys back? Yep, there you are. All right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think it was just the size of Darren Teal and the leaner, the leanness of Tyron Woodley that kind of made it look so much more dramatic. But I got to say, Darren Teal as well. We've seen him look huge inside the ring, uh, inside the cage, and he did look big, but he looked much leaner this time. And I think it just shows that when he's on point, when his weight is on point, and he has to make the weight, he not only made the weight, but he made 169, yeah. which, you know, it sounds like a little bit, but when you know when you're struggling to get that last pound and you go a p another pound over. Uh, he made the weight by far in his show. When he walked inside the octagon, he looked like a normal welterweight, like yeah. a tall one, but he looked like he was weighing around 191 or something, mm -hmm. not 200 pounds like he looked like he did previously before. So I think him making weight, uh, it showed that he didn't have quite that size advantage, mm -hmm. but he was trying to bully. If you remember in the fight, he was kind of pushing forward on Tyron, yeah. bullying him. And, and I got to say, Karen, did you notice, did it seem to you that Tyron was super nervous in the beginning of the fight. I was getting very nervous, nervous vibes. When, when, when Bruce Buffer was calling him and he kept shaking out his triceps, yeah. he, he had that nervous energy. And then when the fight started, Tyron was on the bike. He was on a bicycle, right. not staying in one, one angle for long enough to get caught. Very, very nervous. It wasn't until he did the switch stance overhand right. that he landed on Jay Heron that he started to really kind of open up but that nervous energy had me concerned at first i don't know if you caught that as well yeah it's funny you say that because in the studio i was in the studio with kenny and mike and uh they said the same thing you know all of us were kind of sitting there and i i didn't stress too much about it um because i just figured you know it's a big moment it's a title defense and i figured yeah. you know even though you can walk the walk and talk the talk in that minute before you actually are about to throw hands yeah maybe the the, the truth of the moment really comes to get you and i thought that tyron looked um, you know, he did look a little worried. It, well, not worried is not the right word. But yeah, he, he, you could see a different kind of read on him. Like maybe that he just yeah. recognized that Darren was going to be uh, a, a tough test. I feel like he was just kind of taking in the moment. I don't think he, uh, and maybe, he, you know, maybe there was some maturity. Maybe how is my injury going to hold up? Hey, it actually has been a little while mm -hmm. since I've been in here. You know, you never really mm -hmm. know what's going on um, in their head. But I, I agree with you. I did sense a little bit of a different vibe from him. Um, mm -hmm. But... You know, it seemed like once he first got that first uh, sequence off and that kind of, you know, that explosive uh, where he was able to sort of back Darren up a little bit, like I felt like I saw Tyron go, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Everything's working. Everything's firing. But I do I do agree. It kind of took a minute. Yeah, I felt like him firing uh, allowed him to move forward. And I know that sounds almost like an obvious answer, but without him throwing anything, it was allowing Darren Till mm -hmm. to press him against the cage, which he did for probably the first 30 seconds of the fight. Yeah. Once Tyron started showing, not only can I throw a big bomb of an overhand, but I could cover ground mm -hmm. extremely well. Tyron's very, if I had to point out one thing that Tyron's good at, you want to say power, athleticism, this and that, but the speed to yeah. cover distance. It reminds me almost like Johnny Hendricks in his earlier days, when yeah. Johnny Hendricks came onto the UFC scene and was knocking everyone out. He was doing so because he would cover distance so fast yeah. from where he was planted to his opponent and knock him out. They didn't have time to react. And Tyron does that very well. He does it with that kind of step over, step back right hand that he does. Um, but when he did that, he kind of stopped Darren Till's momentum. He started getting the advantage. Um, you mentioned the uh, the odds makers. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised by that as well. You know, the only thing that would have made me think that um, – Tyron wouldn't be a favorite is because he had such a long layoff. And you're right. actually the one who reminded me that his last time he had a long layoff against Robbie Lawler yeah. was when he became the champ as well. And that was one of his, obviously, uh, monumental performances. And, and, and it happened again. Tyron seems to perform well the more nervous that he is, uh, or the longer the layoff, apparently, because he wasn't really nervous over Robbie Lawler. Um, and, then the, and then the ref breaking him up, Karen, I didn't mean to cut you off, but... Um, the ref broke him up a couple times. I was okay with it when Darren Till was the guy with 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 Tyron against the cage. Okay, right. Because Darren Till isn't trying to take down Tyron. He's, not, he's, he's just, just trying catching to maybe his breath, right? War catch his breath. Maybe he was going to throw an elbow, but he wasn't looking for a takedown. Right. But when but when Tyron was taking his time with uh, Darren Till had his yeah. back against the cage and Tyron was on the inside. I think the ref needs to let them work longer because you need to know as a referee what the motive of each fighter is. And Tyron's objective in that situation was to wear down there until with his foot stomps, was to maybe eventually switch to a single or a yep. double and get the takedown. So I agree. Bit of an early stoppage when they broke it up with yep. Tyron. 
but I was okay with the stoppage when Darren Till was on the and um uh, had Tyron against the cage because he wasn't looking for a takedown, obviously. No, but I agree. He could have thrown an elbow on the break, though. You know what I mean? Right. Which could have been yeah. very dangerous. You know, I'm curious what you think of Darren's low output, right? Because, you know, people talk about the thing with Tyron, you have to be careful. You don't know if you're going to get taken down or you don't know if you're going to get that overhand right, right? So I could see uh, why a fighter would be hesitant. And we saw, you know... The Wonder Boy fight, you know, the, it wasn't like the most output from either him, uh, Darren, or Wonder Boy. But I guess yeah. I kind of thought I'd see a little bit more from Darren. You know, I thought, I thought, and maybe he, right. maybe you know, because in the fight with Steven, it was the fifth round where he really put it on the hardest, and so maybe in Darren's mind, he thought he would, you know, up the output as the <clears> fight went along, and he just didn't get a chance to early on. I'm not really sure, but I mean, his strike count was incredibly, incredibly low. And yeah. I'm just thinking in hindsight, you know, is that something he's really going to regret? Or is it is it really that Tyron makes you so worried about so many different things that you, you know, you're just kind of per, per, uh, paralyzed? I'm, I'm going to give a lot of credit to Tyron in this podcast, Karen. And I don't normally do so. Yeah. I'm, I, I'll be honest, me and Tyron, like I've met him, he's such a good guy. I respect him and, I, and he's a nice guy. Um, but I don't always root for him. I'll be very honest. Sure. Don't always root for him. Um, I was rooting for him in this fight, you know, because he's the American, yeah. because Darren Till maybe lost my favoritism because of the, the way the last fight went, which is out of his control, right. you know, with, with Wonder Boy. But still, whatever it may be, I was watching Tyron a lot closer this yeah. fight than I was watching his opponent. You know, I watch yeah. both guys. But there's always one person you're watching for stronger. Sure. And it's usually the person that in your heart or on your betting odds, whatever yeah. it may be, you're, you're kind of hoping wins. Yeah. That person was tiring in this fight. And you know me. You, and the fans know me. I always go for the striker. Yeah. I always go for the southpaw, the left. Yeah, I know, guy. right? <laughs> the Muay Thai guy, this yeah. was against my beliefs. But I felt, you know, the funny thing about this fight, Karen, I don't know if this, this – um, if this comparison had been brought up before, I haven't heard it if it had, okay. had but – to me, it reminded me of Dan Hardy GSP reenactment okay. in a way. Okay. You know, the the dangerous striker, yeah. the dangerous striker as Dan Hardy was, who won like four fights in a row, right. didn't really have a cemented uh, number two, three, or four guy to take the shot, and he kind of le- leapfrogged the division, yeah. and with a lot of hype around him, and was taking on the more well-rounded uh deserving mm-hmm. champion who was GSP at the time. Now we have Tyron Woodley. Yeah. And that's how the fight felt to me. It was kind of like, yes, Till has a chance of winning, mm-hmm. but it's a small chance because he has to land the punch. He's not going to take him down. He's not going to submit him. Right. I don't think he's going to really outpoint him, uh, mm-hmm. He, could, but he could probably land that big punch. Um, so my credit to Tyron Woodley, as I promised, he did a, a great job. Uh, in the Wonder Boy fight, Darren Till and Wonder Boy, they stayed at kicking range. Yeah. And they played that footsie game for quite a while. You right. remember him throwing those oblique kicks? And Till felt comfortable uh, playing, staying in the kicking yeah. range because he was going against another kicker, another striker. Right. So they were able to kind of play footsies until one of them really committed. Yeah. In this fight, Tyron Willie kept such an extreme amount of distance right there. It made me nervous, as I said. He was making that like he had they had like a six foot range, you yeah. know, like a nervous energy range. But what it did is it didn't allow Darren Till to punch, kick, do anything unless he fully committed. Right. And when he started fully committing is when is when the champion started throwing that overhand yeah. and started using those takedowns. And it made Darren Till all, a little bit off his rocker. There was no in between comfortable right. range that he's used to. Yeah. And, and not allowing that comfortable range for him to get his punches off, push you against the cage allowed Woodley to go to one extreme or the other, extreme overhand uh, distance covering combo or extreme yeah. shoot for the takedown, tie you up against the cage. And that's how he stayed out of harm's uh, harm's way throughout the fight. Right. Yeah, no, it, it was a very smart performance from Tyron. And that's the other thing, even if, you know, after he won the title and people were saying he, he was in an active, he actually had those three fights, uh, the Wonder Boy fights and the Maya fights pretty quickly uh, in yeah. there. But obviously in the meantime, he's been doing fight analysis. And yeah, his fight IQ is very high. Um, people don't maybe give him credit for that. So I think that that's something else that comes into play there for him, um, which makes me a little frustrated and surprised when he's considered an underdog with, you know, everything. Yes, it's garbage day, folks, if you hear that in the background, um, oh, yeah. with everything that's going on with Tyron. But, um, you know, he said afterwards, 
I'll fight, I'll fight anybody, you know, maybe Colby would be the next fight. Obviously, Colby was the interim champion before, uh, and as soon as that fight happened, obviously, you know, he, that's taken away from him. So, I mean, in a way, I guess Colby should be next. If I'm looking at the yeah. tyrant that showed up on Saturday night, I don't think Colby wants any part of that. I mean, obviously, yeah. I know he's going to run his mouth and stuff like that, but I don't think Colby would beat Tyron. Um, you no. know, the Tyron that fought Saturday night, I don't think anybody's beaten for a while unless he went and had a fight with George St. Pierre. So I don't know who would be next. Um, I don't know if initially the George uh, T would fight was something on people's mind as much. Um, but I think that would be kind of entertaining. But I, I think that, you know, if Colby is next and fine, he, you know, I guess he should be. Um, I yeah. don't think he beats Tyron. Yeah, I, I don't think that um, I think that the Kobe fight is the fight that will happen. Yeah. Um, and it's not one that I care to promote Kobe. Yeah. But he is just the next guy in line. I mean, he's yeah. the fight that kind of makes sense, um, hype train or not. Right. Um, I don't think Kobe will beat Tyron. I think Tyron is better in him in every area except for one. And although Tyron showed. Uh, he shut up a lot of naysayers during this fight for this particular category. I still think that Kobe has the more dominant gas tank yeah. over uh, 90% of the guys in the division. Uh, the one thing that I noticed about Kobe early on when I've been in the locker rooms, rooms with him, uh, when I fought Mike Perry, Kobe mm -hmm. Covington fought, I forgot who, and we were warming up side by side. And um, I just remember his warm up was very intense, very oh, yeah. cardio driven thinking, wow, this guy's got an intense warm-up, and he fought very intense. And mm -hmm. I noticed his cardio then during the warm-up. As we've seen Kobe's last couple of fights, he will out-cardio the best yeah. of the best, and, he, and he, he's done so. RDA, I mean, that guy, that's the guy that we used to say, this guy does not get tired. Yeah. And look, look how Kobe Covington handles it. So yep. if Kobe Covington was able to stay out of danger against Tyron Woodley, I do believe, although Tyron has proven that he has a good gas tank, mm -hmm. so what if he has a lot of muscle? Tyron would have to come in extremely lean, I think. Yeah. The leaner, the better. He looked phenomenal in this fight. It obviously is less pounds of weight that he has to carry mm -hmm. around and need less oxygen uh, that your muscles need to breathe. Uh, but I still think Kobe Covington, if it went five rounds, it could be a tougher fight for, for, yeah. for uh, Tyron because Tyron yeah. wouldn't be able to keep the same pace. He would be able to last, but he right. wouldn't be able to keep the same pace as Kobe for those rounds. But, okay, a couple of things. Um... Yeah. Let's go back and forth. Come on. Okay, a couple it. of things. Uh, RDA was in the studio with us on UFC tonight the other day, and yes, obviously he did lose that fight to Colby. Uh, yeah. We were talking about it um, off camera, and he was telling me, uh, and he's not, you know, I mean, it's funny because when you make an explanation, you can't say, this is my excuse. It's not an excuse, yeah. it's an explanation, and people will take this for what they will. But you remember yeah. after the fight, uh, all this stuff came out about his ear, and, you know, he had to have the surgery on his ear. He told me, like, he literally thought his ear was going to fall off during the fight. Yeah. And he's like, look, I just was totally distracted by that. He said, you know, and yes, Colby is a great wrestler. And yes, you know, he was pulling me down and, and, and trying to drown me with the wrestling. And yes, that's very frustrating. He's like, but, in a, you know, that's not what beat me. You know, he's like, I, I, can, I can overcome that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I thought my ear was going to fall off <laughs> during that fight. And yeah. he's like, I just... I just was so worried about the ear that it, it, it impeded, you know, my ability to fight the way I wanted to fight. So that's what yeah. Rafael told me, and I believe him. I have no reason not to believe him. Um, that said, uh, yeah, Colby could could, could go uh, a long time, and yeah, he has great endurance. But also, you know, I mean, Tyron was a wrestler too, and granted he's gotten away from just that wrestling grind of every single day. Mm -hmm. But I do wonder if there is that muscle memory for Tyron that if he did come in lean and if he and Colby engaged in basically a five-round wrestling war – uh, how how even would it be? You know what I mean? I I think maybe Colby spends more time in the wrestling room still than Tyron does, maybe. But um, I wonder uh, if that old wrestler, you know, muscle memory would come out of Tyron and and it'd be fine because on the feet, I don't think Colby has anything for Tyron. I think Tyron's going to be a much better boxer. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, you know, it's it's an interesting question that you bring up, Karen, about how would they weather wrestling for wrestling mano a mano yeah. inside the octagon with everything involved um i've got to say and you know call me a muay thai fighter call me what you <laughs> will but my expert opinion yeah. ladies and gentlemen um i think that kobe would would be the better wrestler yeah. i honestly do yeah. and um although i just said 10 minutes ago i'm about to give tyron a lot of <laughs> a lot of props um i i am for that fight he was he was he was amazing was in that great. fight but I'm just I'm just speaking to Kobe's um, strengths, and his strength is cardio sure. wrestling, cardio, 
MMA wrestling, smothering wrestling, yeah. transitional wrestling. And that's what he does well. And and that's not really, in my opinion, mm-hmm. Tyron Woodley's style of wrestling. Right. Tyron Woodley is a power double guy. He's a big one burst blast type right. of guy. Sure, he's got the muscle memory to, if he shoots the double, to then snatch a single right. if it's not there. But he's not a guy that's going to spin 30, 45 seconds, a minute, grinding on the ground right. different, after you get up, take you down, get up, take you down, get up, take you down, shoot the single, which Kobe doesn't care. He just says, I'm going to find a way to get right. the takedown and smother you. I don't care how much energy I spend. Well, Tyron's a smarter fighter, but he also doesn't have that style of grinding wrestling. Karen, but, let's go. But, <laughs> what, but when Tyron gets you down, I think Tyron, uh, as we saw with the elbows and his ground and pound the other day, could be more damaging to Colby uh, if, if he's in the mount than Colby could be to Tyron. Maybe. I, I agree. I think Tyron has a more powerful ground and pound, yeah. not necessarily a more active ground and pound. So right. it's, okay. it, it's apples to oranges here. It's interesting because one guy is more of a workhorse, yeah. less damaging. Uh, the other guy is more of a power right. uh, guy. Um, Tyron did really good, really good on, on the ground and pound against Till. Obviously, he was able to finish, but he was able to land some strikes right. before that. And a lot of those elbows and everything's a lot of power involved. You can see once he got him there, I was telling, I was screaming at the TV. I was like, I was like, plant your feet, Tyron. And he did yeah. it. He planted one foot. And once you, when you're on your knees, it's hard to generate a lot of power. But once you right. get a foot flat on the ground, then all of a sudden we've got, it's like throwing a punch again. We have our hips and everything involved. And he plants his feet very well, puts power behind it. Where I think Kobe Covington is a bit more. Uh, he just wants to tap away at you. Right. He just wants to punch you, disrespect you, make you kind of mentally check out. Right. He's not really trying to put you as way as as uh, ferociously as Tyron is trying to do it. He's like big brother in you. You gotta quit now. You gotta he quit does. now. You gotta quit now. You gotta quit now. Here's the thing though, too. Tyron did stuff twenty one or twenty two of Darren of uh, uh, Damian Maya's takedown attempts. Um, you know, different kind of takedown attempt from a jiu-jitsu guy than it would be from Colby. But let's also not underestimate Tyron's takedown defense. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't necessarily think that um, Colby would out wrestle him in, in the in the means of um, taking him down significantly, yeah. keeping him down and ground and pounding him. But Kobe, he strikes really. He strikes to land something and then put you against the cage right. and just beat you up, beat you up. You go down, you get up. Right. He kind of plays that game. Right. Um, he does. I feel that he almost doesn't. Obviously, he wants to finish fights and obviously he wants to solidify a takedown. Yeah. But Kobe is content with putting you on the cage and, right. as we just said, just chipping time away wrestling. at you. Right. Chipping away at you. Yeah. yeah, he's one of those fighters. He's a yeah. grinder. He's got cardio. So, it, you know it. It makes for an interesting fight. Uh, I like how Co- uh, Tyron was almost very dismissive of Kobe at yes. the interviews. He uh, didn't really want to give him credit because he knew. He knew that Kobe was going to be on social media Mouth right off. away trying to <laughs> feed off of the momentum from Tyron. Let's build this fight. You know, it's interesting to me, Karen. Help me out on this one. Uh, if I'm not wrong, Kobe was asking – Tyron, let's do this at Madison Square Garden, which yeah. is in November, correct? Yeah. So uh, he wants to be on that card, obviously. Right. They want to make money. They want to be on the best cards in, in a while. But when I saw the video after the fight of Co- of Tyron Woodley giving Darren Till a hug, yeah. it seemed to me that Tyron Woodley was favoring his right arm. Something was wrong with it. Did you hear of any injuries? How was it? I haven't heard anything? yet. You know, I just had texted him just kind of saying congrats and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, didn't know when the next time he's going to work with us because we can get our, you know, our victory cake at Fox. Uh, and the next time T Wood is in is for 229 when we're covering, you know, Connor and Habib. Um, gotcha. So I didn't really get into it and ask him. And I'll have to go look at that footage again. Um, but I think even st- either way, you know, November, that is a, a, a quick turnaround. And we heard how hard Tyron trained for Darren, how he said, Darren brought you know all this other stuff out of him and he trained like a savage like that could that's a fast turnaround and you know yeah I know everybody wants to fight at Madison Square Garden and stuff and that is a big deal maybe if they incentivized him enough he could do it but I don't know I don't think that Colby gets to call the shot now after you know asking for Tyron and you know getting that belt that that interim title Mm -hmm. and then oh all of a sudden I can't fight because of my nose but I get to dictate you know you have a short camp and fight me like I don't know I'd be like no dude we're good I'm the champion yeah. we'll fight when I say we fight you know even though yeah. you do maybe want that that New York payday I, I just don't think Colby's in the dictating when position 
I agree. I agree. But I guess, I guess more of my question was, um, because of that date, it, it, yeah. I didn't think Tyron was entertaining that date so much. Uh, but I was curious. But we'll about see. Yeah. If he's hurt or not. Like if there is some, yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll, I'm sure we'll find out, you know, I'm sure we'll find out. Hopefully, uh, if so, it, hopefully it's nothing major. Cause you know, yeah, that, that, that was an injury had to come back f- for some time, but, um, it, it well, that was, was pretty right awesome. Arm, you know, right what, uh, anything else before we move on? It was his right shoulder. They had previously had surgery. I think so. On, right? Yeah. 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 Which is why when he hit our punching bag at work, he hit it with his left hand and he still, he still got a hell of a score. <laughs> gotcha. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, so, you know, Alan, we were supposed to have two title fights on Saturday. Uh, Nico Montano was supposed to defend her flyweight title against Valentina Shevchenko. But on Friday, that was canceled. She was taken to the uh, hospital for uh, medical reasons while she was going through her weight cut. And long story short, um, you know, she didn't fight. Valentina says that she knew that was going to happen and that Nico just showed up for fight week to try to get the publicity and work the crowd and that she never really had any intention of fighting and that she, you know, bailed out on this fight several times before. Um, if you look at Nico on Instagram, she posted this uh, multiple page story explaining how she'd never signed a contract to fight uh, Valentina prior to this. So she'd only ever signed it once and she'd actually asked for a date in October cause she knew she wouldn't be ready after tough, you know, having to cut the weight so many times. And then she had a knee, mm-hmm. uh, I mean a foot injury, uh, tonsillitis, I believe it was. So she had actually told UFC, I won't be ready until October, but they made her fight in September according to her. Uh, and so that was part of the reason, you know, she sort of kind of gave them an idea that maybe everything isn't going to be great with me. Um, but that uh, Valentina was, you know, crazy and obsessed. And, you know, the whole situation is a mess. I, I, It's unfortunate she had to get stripped and, you know, she didn't make the weight. And maybe that's the policy that should be going forward. A champion, you know, gets stripped if they don't make the weight. But um, I don't think she was scared. You know, Alan, if you, no. if you hear the people, oh, Nico's scared, like... You know, I think if you, the day you sign up to be a professional fighter, I don't, I don't think people are allowed to say you're scared anymore. No. What's your take? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, j- just to, to, to finish on that point you just made, I think one of the things, I don't know why this is still in my head, but when, when Darren Till is always saying, I'm not bloody scared, I'm, I'm not, not scared. scared. Yeah. I'm always like, Big whoopty, bro. Like, I'm not scared of anybody. Like, who, who, we're fighters. Who's scared? Like, right. this is like fun for us. Yes, there's a lot of scared, nervous emotions. Right. But you, like, who's scared of anybody? He's like, I'm not scared of them. Yeah. I'm just like, bro, I know that was a little bit Irish at my accent, but <laughs> yeah. So, to answer, to, 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 to stick to the point, yeah. Darren Till is not scared. No. Nope. A lot of us fighters aren't scared. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I just blanked on who we're talking Nico, about. Nico. Um, Nico. Yeah, Nico, my th- uh, she's definitely not scared. I mean, I feel sorry for her that this is the road that it went down, yeah. that, that she got sick and, and she had to get stripped. And I mean, she's got to be devastated. I mean, from all the doubters. And look, I've seen all the interviews she's been doing. Um, I got to say, I'm actually really impressed with the UFC, how much they were kind of promoting her into this fight. For, for her being such an overwhelming underdog and having so many people pretty much saying, like, she's about to get beat up. Mm-hmm. This is next level. Valentina Shevchenko is a whole nother level. And look, I'm one of those people. Yeah. I, I would have put my money on Valentina. She just is a seasoned fighter who's fought yeah. the best, performed against the best, and she, this is her lifestyle. But, you know, watching the countdown, Karen, they gave uh, um, the majority of the time to Nico yeah. uh, during the countdown, really kind of telling her story, mm-hmm. letting you get to know her. Because you know what? I'm one of those people that I didn't watch the, uh, the Ultimate Fighter yeah. that much that season. I'm not that familiar with her. She hasn't fought much. She hasn't yeah, done so it's much. hard to know much about her. How do you know much about her? How do you relate to somebody who you don't know much about and, and, and is the, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but the most underdeserving uh, champion that we have because of the way that she got the title. Right. Um, so it was intriguing. It's funny. My mother's in town helping me with my neck. She watched the whole countdown with me. When this fight was announced that it was off, she was devastated. My mom was like, I wanted to see this girl fight. I feel like they built her up so much. I'm like, you know what? Me too. I was learning about her just as casual fans like my mom were learning about her. So it sucks that this fight didn't happen. Um, She's got to be devastated. Mm -hmm. I'm sure all she wanted to do was prove that she's legit. And you know what? I don't think she would have won, but I think she would have went out there, and I think she would have won over the fans. She would have fought hard, and she would have showed, look, I deserve to be here. Whoever wins is the better woman that night, but I deserve to be here, and I want to show that. And not getting to show that as a fighter 
is the most gut-wrenching thing of it all. And so for her to not get to do that, have to go to the hospital, and then everybody come down even harder on her, I feel bad for her. But to say that she was scared in any way, you know, there's things like if I'm fighting Mike Perry or I'm fighting Kobe Covington, right. okay, Mike's a scarier guy because he's trying to knock your lights right. out. Kobe's a guy that's going to smother you. So there's different emotions of like, right. what am I getting into? But you're not scared of either guy, you know what I mean? Just like you're a fighter. Like, it doesn't make sense. It's just funny to me when I hear that. Yeah, it's tough. You know, I did get to know Nico more because I do tough talk and stuff. And she's a really cool woman. And, yeah, I agree. Totally not scared. Um, you know, this is a woman who's had a scrappy uh, life. And, you know, obviously people know about her being Navajo. And, you know, it's not like she comes from a, a lot, you know. So she's already built herself up. So she really has a fighting spirit, like true and true. Yeah. Um, and so I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredibly unfortunate. Listen, her uh, professional fight record, if I'm not mistaken, I think is, is, you know, like five and two. And obviously Valentina, you know, has way, way, way more experience. Um, she had, you know, 50 something Muay Thai fights or whatever. Like her combined record is 60 something and, and three or four or whatever. Yeah. So there's a way more experience on Valentina's end, uh, even just in terms of everything, making the weight and stuff like this. This is just still something that, yeah, Nico hasn't had to do as many times. Um and I like Valentina. And I i mean, I know she's so frustrated, though. That's the thing is, you know, it happened to her with Amanda Nunes on the day of. Uh, it's happened to her now. Uh, this is a second title fight that she didn't get to have. Uh, you know, so I definitely understand her frustration there. Um, and, you know, who who knows what it was going on behind, how many times they were scheduled to fight or what. I don't know what they're going to do now, if they still would make these two women match up, if they would just let Valentina fight, you know, another ranked um, 125-er instead for the title. Uh, you know, Caitlin Chukagian was there in town trying to get that fight, um, th but then it didn't work out with like getting to weigh in because she was actually already there um i mean you could make it nico has to fight sujara who she was supposed to fight for the title on the show instead but valentina just fights you know another ranked person i i'm not sure what they should do with that um but i hope we see i mean both women in, in action soon um the thing we did see though Jessica Andrade, who, who people people like to say it's like she's your little sister. Like Jessica Andrade, I think was almost rocking the Alan Joe Ban hairdo. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Okay. And she's such a badass. I love yeah. that woman. I mean, she is so fun to watch, and I definitely had her picked uh, to win over Kovalevich. You know, Kovalevich is very, very talented, but I just felt like you know almost anybody going up against Je Jessica is a Mack truck. You know, and yeah. she's just such a beast. Um, I think she's fantastic, uh, and she's got to get the next title shot. Yeah, I mean, talk about put on a show, put on a display. The, the, the walk-off type knockout, yeah. um, the, the, the way she, the aggressiveness of her. Uh, I couldn't say enough about her, but what I want to talk about, Karen, did you watch Carolina's uh, video to her fans afterward where she pretty much talked about her loss. Did you watch that? I haven't seen it yet. Is it heartbreaking? She's the most oh adorable God. thing, and I don't she even... She is so sweet. Thank you. She is so adorable. Yeah. Karen, it's like... I don't know. It's like... It made me think, like, like what if what if I tried that? Because I do videos. When I lose, yeah. I'm feeling I'm like... I'm upset, and I'm speaking from the heart, but something about her, she's so sweet, and she's like... <laughs> She's like, I'm so, so sorry. And she's like literally just crying while she's oh, no. talking. It's, it's like the sweet, it's like a little girl apologizing for eating your brownie or something. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. It's not a big deal. You'll, you'll get another one. You'll it's be okay. okay. Just stop crying. I felt so bad for her. I just wanted to give her, she's the sweetest little thing. Yeah. And it's almost like you watch that video. I, I encourage all fans. I will. I'll check it out. If you're not familiar, or if you're not familiar with Carolina, Look it up on Twitter. Find her video. You'll be a fan because she's the sweetest little doll. I think I'm going to follow her on Instagram just because I of that. I already but, follow her. I guess I just haven't seen that clip yet. Yeah. I, I, she, she did like a two-language version. She okay, did one nice. version for her native language and then an English one. But um, I've always liked her. She's, yeah. got a, she's got like a little silent swag about her, you for know, sure. uh, outside of fighting. She's got her in, the, in fighting as well, but she's got like this swag about her. She doesn't always wear the Reebok gear. She wears her own clothes. Right. She's so calm, cool, and collected going into the octagon. She's a tremendous fighter. Yeah. She's a pretty girl. Um, it wasn't her night. It no. was the night that, that Jessica Andrade was proving to the world that she is a freaking beast, and she did that. But 
uh, Carolina, like, uh, she's such a sweetheart. She's going to come back, and she yeah. won me over. Uh, she had me before the fight, but she won me over with the video after her loss. Right. She, she's such a sweet thing. Yeah, and, you know, Carolina has beaten Rose now. I mean, you know, so she got a split decision win over her, so she was definitely looking yeah. to try to get another title shot. Um, you know, Jessica had said, I guess, in one of the interviews that she wanted to fight more on the feet because usually she is, you know, just takes people down and just wails on them. I mean, her nickname, Bate Estaca, is pile driver. I mean, this is a woman who's incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um, you know, but she had said, I guess, she wanted to stand up and fight a little bit more. I always call her, like, the female John Lineker, and I mean that as a whole 100%, you know, uh, um, yeah. compliment. Like, she just squares off and is not afraid at all. Um, which I think is amazing. You know, you know, maybe she should play a little more defense every now and then, um, but I guess she knows she has a chin and doesn't feel that threatened. Obviously, she used to fight 135 pounds, so, you know, maybe she doesn't feel that threatened by a 115-er. Uh, I feel like she's the most powerful girl in that division, so maybe she just is, is fearless, even though, you know, we know a, a well-placed uh, punch anywhere from anyone can do the right thing. But that said, you know, I don't know um, when Rose will be ready to fight. Uh, it's been a while, and, you know, I guess there's still some um, trauma from the Connor situation with Rose, but oh, I, I feel yeah. like it's got to be Jessica and... I'm ready anytime to see that fight. Uh, you know, I think it'd be interesting because Rose is, is not the most muscular woman, you know, and um, that's an issue I know. Uh, Andrea uh, Hill, I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, Angel Hill, she had said after that fight with, with Andrade that, yeah, she felt like she needed to put on more muscle. So I don't know if Rose would be in danger of the same kind of threat of being out-muscled and outworked, but Rose is such a good striker and she also has a submission threat. But I really hope uh, Jessica gets the shot. Yeah, uh, I think she, she made a statement in that fight to get the shot. Mm -hmm. um, I, I agree. It's funny. Like, you know, sometimes you see body types and you think of Rose and you're like, how is she going to contend with the body type of Jessica Andrade? Yeah. But then you look at the former champ, Joanna Eugenczyk, and she was able to do it time and time again. All of her comp uh, opponents, while she was the reigning champion, yeah. were built like that. The Jessica Andrades yeah. and the... Um, Gedalia. Uh, uh, Gedalia, thank mm -hmm. you. All of those girls were grappling style girls built to come in there, and uh, and she was able to deal with it. And obviously, we know how um, how Rose dealt with Ioana, but maybe Rose is more fitted to deal with the Ioana Eugene chick, rather, but not as suited to deal with the wrestling type girls mm -hmm. individual. We, we we're gonna see it. Yeah, uh, we need to see, but. I guess what I'm getting at is even though Rose, you can't do MMA math, and Rose is able to deal with the champ, Ioana, yeah. but how will she weather the storm against all these tough wrestling right. built girls that with diff different body types that are still in the division waiting to come up? Yeah, yeah I'm interested to see it too. For sure. Um, and I'm pretty sure that one was decided that it is officially a, a number one contender fight. So I'm pretty sure Dana said that that, that was what was going to happen, okay, which they is well-deserved. Um yeah. You know, not to, not to jump too much ahead, but while yeah. we're on the women, while we're on the women, I mean, um, I'm forgetting everybody's name. I'm not on medication. Medicine. Pudelova and guys, uh, Irene Aldana got fight of the night, and they were on. Yeah, that, they were that on that fight, fight pass, and, and they one, got fight of the night. Yeah. Supposedly a tremendous fight. I turned it on right as it was ending. I wish yeah. I saw that. But the other girl fight that night, that uh, um, the Cookie Monster and yes, um, Tatiana Suarez. Oh my God! Talk about a future champion. That that. That when we're talking about possible opponents for Rose, mm -hmm. I kept seeing, I kept envisioning Tatiana because she impressed me so much in that fight. I mean, she's going to be a tough girl for anyone to deal with. Uh, my coach Kenny Johnson was in the corner I on the know, other yeah. corner in that fight, and there was nothing that could be done. Uh, she's too big, too strong, too good of a grappler. Yeah, I think she's going to give every girl in that division. Uh, a tough fight, a tough fight. She's a future champion in my eyes. Yeah, she's incredible. And it's funny, for a little perspective, you know, Tatiana fights uh, at 115, and she's a little bit shorter than me, not by a lot, but she's got even more broad shoulders than I do. I'm 5'8", and Tatiana is more broad-shouldered than I am. Yeah. And uh, I won't give you an exact number, but I weigh a little bit more than 115 pounds. <laughs> 
But uh, my point is, is that she is a, uh, um, all the right places. It's in all the right places. Uh, and she, she is a formidable, formidable woman. You know what I mean? And she, she, Tatiana has been wrestling, you know, for like 25 years. She was going to go into the Olympics before she found mm. out she had thyroid cancer. I mean, she said something really funny before this fight. She said something like she's only displayed 1% of her wrestling so far in a fight because she hadn't really needed to, you know what I mean? Which is mind-blowing when you think about how she had basically commanded every single fight so far. So the fact that she was going up against Carla, who we know is a great wrestler in her own right and who is also a former champion and had Kenny in her corner, we know if if, if somebody's going to be ready for Tatiana's wrestling in that division, it was going to be Carla. And Carla just didn't have an answer for being overpowered like that. She just, it just, I mean, God, Carla has this, the most heart. Like, I, I would have been like, you know what, we're good. God damn it, we're good. Like, it just didn't look like there, it, anything was going to turn around. And there was a couple times, like, she got a reversal or she would get some great move. And it was like, right on Carla. And then it was just like, pff, back down in the water, you know. And it just like, I got to believe that be so disheartening to keep going on in a fight like that where you yeah. literally are just drowning. Like, Tati. Tatiana just drowns women down there. And, uh, man, just she's so – and she's a really cool chick, too. Nice girl and everything. But, uh, yeah, hard not to look at her and not see a, a future champ. Carla Esparza got big-sistered by yeah. Tatiana Suarez. And, 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 and like you said, it she – Carla is a tremendous wrestler in her mm-hmm. own right. But it was like it was like they were in a different weight class. It's yeah. like they were on a different division, a different level. She was so much stronger. Yeah. It made – I, I, I'm not using the word big sister lightly. It's like she was her big sister. Like she mm-hmm. was bigger, stronger, tougher, better. And she was like, even though you're a wrestler, like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm not having any of it. She did whatever right. she wanted. Um, it, it was crazy to see how dominant she was. They brought up a good point on the commentary during the fight that Carla, Carla Esparza gave Rose such uh, yeah. um, a difficult time. This was, this was a while back. Right. But a difficult time in the grappling department. And look what... What, what Suarez did to her yep. so easily. And you know what? It's another thing to go wrestling, wrestling, uh, pure wrestling. But when you have people that are really good wrestlers, big and strong, mm-hmm. and different body types, like you mentioned, she's taller, she's like 5'8 or so, yep. like a John Jones, who may not have made big waves in collegiate wrestling, right. but when he gets inside the octagon, when somebody has all these other weapons and they're good wrestling with range, it makes them a better wrestler mm-hmm. if they know how to use it. And she's someone who I could see... Uh, definitely knowing how yeah. to use it and giving somebody a lot of trouble. So um, I'm keeping my eye on her. I, I see her as a future champion. I really do. Well, and the curious thing is, too, is, you know, she was saying she would be ready for a title shot. I know I feel like Andrade, you know, should be next, but we were in the studio kind of getting excited about what if you put Tatiana Suarez up against Ioana? Yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. I mean, I I, I, I don't know. I feel bad for Ioana. I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the hype train, Karen. I'm on the hype train. <laughs> All and, aboard! And, and yeah, exactly. You know, I love me some. Uh, we, we both love us. Some, I love uh, a good striker. Yeah, it's hard not to like Joanna, but I'd be really curious. Yeah. I mean, because Claudia Gadelia was able to take Joanna down a lot and hold her down and kind of wear her out a little yeah. bit. And Joanna, you know, came back later in the fight and won the fight. But um, you know, Gadelia had some success taking taking Joanna down. So I literally on Saturday night I was like, every single woman in the division should just be at wrestling practice now. And even though you can't catch up to twenty five years of experience from Tatiana, like I feel like. Every Every woman in that division right now just should be wrestling all day, every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because a lot of girls that we consider the wrestlers in the division were just girls that kind of came into MMA with a grappling base. But now yeah. we have true wrestlers, true killers on the mat who could have been in the highest level, as you mentioned, yeah. uh, in the division. And, and look what they're doing to girl, to other girls. So get 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 your wrestling shoes tied up, ladies. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's, um, the division just got tougher. Well, you know, it's funny. You were talking about your mom being there, helping you with your surgery and getting into the fight. My mom um, is actually in Jamaica right now. So I sent her a picture of Al Jermaine Sterling out there. You know, he's one of the, uh, there's a few Jamaican guys in the UFC and Al Joe got a great finish. Um, and I took this picture of her, of him with, you know, in the, in the studio and I sent it to her down in Jamaica. And I'm like, make sure you show the guys in the bar because he had the, the flag wrapped around him and everything. Um, yeah. I find Al Joe to be such a likable guy, um, regardless yeah. of our shared heritage or whatever. I just, I like everything about him. I like his style. I like how he, t- I just like his vibe. I like, I like Aljo a lot. Um, 
Really good fight with Cody. He gets the, I don't want to pronounce it wrong, the Suleyev stretch or whatever. And you know he's backstage thinking like, 50 G's, baby. And then I was like, oh my God, what happened when Zabit basically pulled off the same thing? Like, you you tell me like what it's like being backstage. Because you figure, if you're there and you got the sickest finish or something, you're figuring you got a pretty good chance of getting a bonus. And then the dude does the same thing. Now listen, prior to, to Saturday... That had only happened once in the history of yeah. UFC, and then I they remember, got in the two more on division. the same night. Yeah, that's it. It's insane. I remember when it happened. It was a, a it was a welterweight guy, the wrestler. Yeah, uh, Robertson, Kenny Robertson, I think it was. It like one right. UFC one fifty four. I think they said it was. Exactly. He pulled it off. We were shocked by it. Um, Aljamain Sterling did it. Man, he's got some creative back control back. Yeah, pressure. how he's, uh, it was awesome. He's really good when he gets when he gets in the grappling department. Um, he got the submission, blew our minds, and then to take you inside of a fighter's eyes, I always get back there, and immediately you go, you do your medicals, you get clear about the doctor, you go to the green room and get some food. You know, you want to go eat, and there's yeah. a bunch of TVs, and you're there with your team, and I guarantee you, he's sitting there with his team, and they're thinking, please be boring fights, please no <laughs> knockouts, please no dope submissions. Right. No dope submissions, the exact same submission comes up. Pretty much, it canceled out his submission. Totally. It took his 50 Gs right away. Um, you know, after the show was done, I was super curious. I was Googling it right away, like, who got the bonus, who got the bonus? Right. Because I was like, were they going to bonus both of them? They should But then I was like, well, how do you bonus both of them? Because then you got to give the main event guy, Tyron, who carried the whole show, who got the finish, a bonus. But then there was that head kick knockout in yes. the welterweight division. There was that that punch knockout in the weight division. Nico Price got right. knocked out. There were so many finishes, so many good fights. There was the women's fight of the night. Yep. But it's like somebody deserves something. Everybody deserves a piece. So I think those guys canceled each other out. Being If one of them had got that submission, another one got a rear naked choke or something, right. um, I think that he would have gotten a bonus because it would have been so rare, the rarity of it. Right. But then when two in one night, <laughs> two – like three fights apart happens, it's like, oh, okay, it's no longer uh, a rare submission. Right. And it's not, wasn't that exciting, apparently. And so they didn't get a bonus. I was yeah. shocked, man. But I saw, I saw Al Jameen was kind of tweeting about it out there, trying to yeah. get a bonus. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen or whatever. You can maybe reach out to Dana, send an <laughs> yeah. email. I did before we had that story yes. where I was, able to, I was able to get a little something, something, but. Yeah, you're not going to get that 50 Gs, I don't think. But um, I, I agree. I like Aljamain. We've always been cool. Yeah. We shot a pilot together a couple oh, yeah. months ago at a muscle farm. And uh, there's a script written. It's kind of like the show Ballers okay. on, on HBO. But if you take Ballers and turn it into an MMA situation, that's kind of what it was. Uh, I played myself. Yeah. Aljamain was kind of playing the lead character. And this role was written for him. It's nice. like a young, cocky, brash, arrogant fighter, right, right. confident, this and that. He's got his crew with him all the time. <laughs> the, uh, he was perfect for the role. He fell right into it very well. Uh, I'm hoping he gets picked up. I'd like to see how his uh, how he did uh, when, when he gets cut and edited and everything. Yeah, well, I'll have to get a I'll have to get a role on that. Too. That sounds yeah, cool. right. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. no, he's a good dude. Um, and yeah, once again, the the bonus, the fight of the night did go to Pudilova uh, and Irene Aldana for their back and forth fight. Um, and yeah, the bonuses went to T Wood and to Jessica Andrade. Like you said, you have to give it to the. It's the champ. It's the main event. It's a finish. And he, I love that he got a submission. Like T, who's T Wood getting submissions? Got his black belt yeah. on top of it uh, from Dean after. So that was cool. But you mentioned a couple of other great knockouts. Yeah. So there was the the Jeff Neal head kick KO of Frank Camacho. Because by the way, Camacho, that dude, he, oh. he he always is in an exciting fight, right? There was one with Damian yeah. Brown where they both went back and forth and da da da. Like that guy's never in a boring fight. But right. that head kick, it was like I mean the sound of it, everything, man, that was brutal. I thought if any if any fight if any finish deserved a guarantee shoe in for yeah. the bonus that head kick I mean it had right. everything that you wanted and a head kick knockout the way that he fell the blood on his face the yeah. picture after where it, it, it hit him here yeah. and then the other side of his face <laughs> yeah, totally it was crazy I thought that guy just got a big payday yeah and they took it from him as much as impressive as the uh, the Jessica Andrade knockout was. I get it. They were bigger names. They were higher up yeah. on the card. And for a woman, a woman to do a one punch knockout, we don't see that. Um, it's a, it's a, it's more rare. Yeah. And so I think that's 
would carry would carry that one. The rarity of it uh, in that in that weight division, and they're they're bigger names. They're ranked. Yeah. There's a lot more on the line. But when you talk about just a, uh, an explosive finish, how could they not give that head kick knockout? I, f- I feel bad for the guy. Yeah, it was great. Also, one of the other finishes we kept saying in, uh, leading up to the fight, we we're like, Al Hassan versus Price isn't going to last yeah. long, but it sure is going to be fun. Uh, and I got to be yeah. honest with you, when Al Hassan uh, knocked him out, I figured that you were sitting at home going, should have been me. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's such a weird feeling. Every time you watch your opponents fight, it's like, don't want him to win, don't want him to lose. Yeah. I don't have hate against any of no, my opponents. No. But a little piece of me thinks, oh, I, I could have beat him. I just made a mistake. Yeah. And there's a weird thing. I got caught throwing a lazy kick price. I got caught throwing a lazy kick. Price was ready. Right. And he countered it. Uh, and right when the fight started, his opponent threw a lazy kick. Price countered him with a straight right hand. It didn't land flush. And I'm thinking, why did he throw that kick? He's going to make the same mistake as me. Right. Then he made a good move, pressed forward, put uh, Price against the cage. Uh, Nico doesn't um, doesn't th- throw that well at combos when he's mm-hmm. backing up or somebody's coming forward on him. And man, did he get slept? I mean, he went down on one knee. Yeah, he did. And uh, he didn't know it hit him, man. That was that was a big performance. I, I wasn't real familiar with uh, with with his opponent. Yeah. But uh, I'm familiar with him now, man. He, he's impressive. Yeah, Al Hassan, and also you know putting his name on the map. Uh, Darren Stewart, um, uh, English guy, the dentist. He got the knockout over Charles Bird. That was a fun fight. Like you know, it's funny because oh, yeah. even the like Jim Miller coming back on getting a win. Um, yeah. The Diego Sanchez fight. He put the beat oh, down yeah. on. Like it, you know, there, there was part of the people were like, oh, it's so heartwarming to see the old dudes like Jim and Diego still in there doing it. Like you know, somebody sent sent something out. They said Darren Till was 12 years old when Diego Sanchez was debuting on The Ultimate Fighter ah. and stuff like that. When you think of that perspective. You know, it's cool to see Diego still in there doing. I mean, I, I don't necessarily think he needs to keep going forever and ever and ever. But the fact yeah. that he came back and got the win. But, like, this whole card was really entertaining. And I know a lot of people at first, like, you know, sometimes they look at a card and it doesn't have a ton of huge names and this and that. And they think it's going to stink. Like, that card had more finishes and just more exciting fights than ones that we've seen in quite a while. I, 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 I had a really good time. <laughs> Same here. It, it was a good card. I'm glad that I ordered. I'm glad I watched. Um, yeah. All in all, man, it, it, it was. It, I, I feel like a good card. Hard, hard to figure who was going to get the bonuses and whatnot. That yeah. was kind of what I was thinking throughout. But um, at the end, it was kind of like Tyron earned his respect in my yeah. mind. You know, he'd been gone for a while, and he has a lot of haters because mm-hmm. he, you know, he's a complainer. Let's be honest. Tyron yeah. complains a lot. But when you go out there and you put on performances like that, you do cement your legacy. You don't have to ask for it. You just do it. You put up or shut up. And he put up that night, and he got a lot more respect in my mind. So I, I thought I thought he did a great job that night. Yeah, and, you know, I've known Tyron a long time. Uh, so we've been friends. And, um, you know, I was working the night he became the champion. I've worked, you know, several of his fights over the years. And, uh, you know, so... Uh, that's my friend, you know what I mean? So I want to see my friend succeed. Right. Right. And I do know when he gets, um, you know, when people online, social media, or whatever, when they attack him, like, I, I get it. I understand what they hear mm-hmm. or see, and I understand why, you know, I just, I understand what's happening. It, 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 it bums me out, certainly, when he wouldn't get respect or um, when people kind of harp on one thing and just, oh, all he does is talk about race. It's, it's A, it's not true, but B, mm-hmm. you know, uh it's it's a tricky situation because unless you're a tyrant or unless you're a black person who is trying to speak out against something that is true and is happening, you know, you're always going to get that resistance. Obviously we see it with the cap, we see it with everything. Um, and I'm not trying to get into some big political thing. I'm just saying that like, I understand why people kind of want to plug their ears sometimes when he's talking. And I understand how hard it is for him to take the, take the lead on some of these things and become the target. Um, yeah. and, and it's really hard. It's really hard for anybody in a position to speak out against an injustice that they believe is happening. Um, you're going to alienate people. So I agree with you. Hopefully any of the people that were alienated or, or had a bad taste in their mouth about his, um, his persona or what he talks about, hopefully the fight fan in them was able to just see a really incredible champion who's really, really very, very talented. Yeah, to see past it, to see past it. And, and that's yeah. what I was able to do. And I don't disagree with a lot of stuff Tyron does. But yeah. as I labeled him, he complains a lot. And, and you're right, it's more of speaking out. And yeah. however you la- however you label it, um, I, it's respect. And, yeah. and I can see through it and hope all the other fans see through it and just have respect for the man 
and what he's accomplished. And uh, and he's a guy, to be honest, guys like The Rock I speak about, guys like DC, guys that are successful in so many areas. Mm-hmm. That's the guys that I look up to because that's the kind of stuff that I like to do. And Tyron's become one of those guys that he's been su- successful in mm-hmm. so many ways, if it's on Fox, if it's in acting, if it's in singing. Yeah getting his black belt, whatever it is. So so congrats to him on that. By the way, Karen, were you on the way home? Were you jamming out to uh, I'm Going to Beat Your Ass by Tyron? I'm Going to Beat Your Ass, no. I wasn't in the car. Wait, actually, I need to share that video that Wade, Wade shared a video. He, we were dry, he came to the studio to watch. And I had on Drake's Nice for What? And I thought he was listening to the same thing. So I was like car dancing with him. And apparently he was listening to something else and made a very funny video yeah. of me that I will actually share as well because it is very funny. But I've heard T. Wood's music um, at Fox. And let's just say he drops the N-word a lot. And like, you know, it's like yeah. it's it's hard. You know, it's it's not like it's not. Uh, it's, it's, it's N.W.A. Yeah. And so okay. that's like a running joke between the two of us is because he's never heard me say the N-word and I don't like to say the N-word. And even if it's, you know, with an A, not an E-R on the end, like it's just a really hard thing for me to say because I just think yeah. it's just terrible, you know, and I don't call any of my homies my N-word. Like it just doesn't yeah. work. So it's a running joke for him to try to get me to say it. And like we'll be like listening yeah. to some song or whatever, even in the nice for what, we, you know, you don't have to be nice for what to these. And I'm always like to these. I can't say it, but uh, if I do end up singing along to T Wood, I'm gonna have to drop some of those because his stuff is—he's not playing. But I, I'm excited for him. I'm excited to hear it. I'm excited for it to come out. Uh, I think people are gonna enjoy it. <laughs> well, I'll have to—I have to hear it. I'll be—I'll be the critic. I'll be, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, i i appreciate good music, and I appreciate even if it's something I don't think is like a high-level music. Right. I can appreciate a, a fighter who's showing his talent. So right. I'll, be, I'll open it. I'll listen to it with open ears. You know? Cool, cool, cool. So for me this weekend, you know, we obviously, um, the UFC has that first card in Russia that is on uh, Fight Pass. So we don't do stuff in the studio for that. But I, Alan, am headed to the ATL for my first football game um, next nice, Sunday. Yeah. yeah, I'll be working the Falcons-Panthers game. So uh, I get there on like fly out on Thursday and I'm not really sure yet where, you know, that'll be the local game for certain Fox affiliates. You know, I'm not sure how it all works out, who gets to see it. You know, there's always like a game of the week. There's always like a national game and then there's, you know, games in the regional area. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. But if people are down in that market, um, they should uh, they should check it out. If you like football, I love football. I have uh, for, you know ever uh since my dad was a pop warner football coach and all that stuff so i'm excited i'm a little i'm a little nervous because it's like i just get to sort of like run around on the sidelines and try to find stories and stuff and i'm 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 excited about it but like i also love football like there's a part of me that was wondering if i was just going to get caught up watching the game and like forget to go do do my job and like you know what i mean walk around and ask people stuff and uh um, but it's cool, and and a lot of those guys I know are fight fans and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to being on the sidelines. So it's my first game. Then a couple weeks from now I go to Jacksonville. Then a couple weeks later I'm back in uh, Atlanta. So I'm psyched. This is my first game this weekend. I'm excited to see it, man. I am. I want to see Cameron Bryant, the MMA analyst, yeah. or whatever you want to <laughs> say, just the girl that's been in the fight world for yeah. so long. The confident Cameron Bryant. In a new sport. I mean, you know football, but it's a new job for you. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious to see what you come up with, to see you on TV talking <laughs> football with everyone. I mean, I know it's just going to be like that. Yeah. It's going to come to you. You're a professional. You're going to do great at it. But um, I'm excited, man. I want to see it. I'll, yeah. I'll try to, I'm hoping that, like, they air some of the games here that you're going to be on so I can watch them. Well, thank you. Yeah, if not, I'll, I'll probably be able to get some footage. Uh, some after, you know, Alan, we go over the tapes after, you know, do a little Monday morning quarterbacking and, uh, you know. There we go. <laughs> Who's your team, by the way? The Saints, wait, the, the, did the Saints win yesterday or not? They did. The Saints, they, they, they played horrible. They, they, they got whooped up on by the Buccaneers, who's the division Oh, that's rival. right. The, yeah, I'm going not to a have a look. Bucks game. I'm going to be doing a, a Bucks okay. game in a few weeks. Yeah, so, but yeah, that's right. I, I do not like a good the look. Saints. That's too bad. And, and I used to be a huge football fan growing up. In Louisiana, it's all people do. Since I've been in L.A., I don't watch it as much. Right. And in this season, I'm like, you know what? Let me get back into my football ways. So watching it last night, they had a tremendous game. I don't know if you caught the end of the Green Bay game. But, I did. Um, it, it was crazy. Yeah. I turned on the TV right as they were mounting the comeback. I got right. to witness that. And it gave me that old feeling in the back of like, oh, this is why I used to love football. Yeah. Because you watch it on a Sunday night. You feel like you're part of America or something. For like sure. All of America is watching. You're, you're taking part in something that everybody across 
America's taking part in. Agreed. And uh, it just felt good. I went to bed thinking, oh, that's why I used to love watching football. So I think I'm going to get into it again this season. Yeah. Well, you need at some point you'll have to come over here because literally most of the friends in my neighborhood are Saints fans. Um, and oh, nice. so, yeah, so we know about, like, literally, there was one time we even, like, Skyped in our friend, you know what I mean, to, like, watch the game with us and everything, because we're all sitting around, though. Well, we know a bunch of Saints fans uh, who get together, so, yeah, at some point I'll have you come over and watch uh, with them. But, yeah, no, I've always loved football. Of course, I'm from New England, so the Patriots are my team. Don't let everybody get mad at me, and who knows what kind of season we're going to have, and so far it'll still be fine. But uh, I'm not some bandwagoner. I actually grew up outside of Boston, so that's why that is my team. But of course, I'll be 100% neutral out there on the field, Alan. I won't be. Uh, I won't be. Born. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course. Of course, Karen Bryant. Cool. Well, so uh, social media. I am at Karen Bryant. K A R Y N. That is on uh, Twitter and also on YouTube. Um, then we have MMA Heat, of course, on Instagram. I am K B Heat. Uh, so give a follow. Why don't you, Alan? Where can they find you? Yeah, hope, hope I'm not breaking up too much, guys. Tiny uh, bit. If you could, oh, there you okay. are. Okay, if it's if it's not frozen, at Alan Joban, nothing has changed. Check it out. Thank you guys for viewing the podcast. Uh, it, I know we're not together on this one, but it was such a a good card. We just we were both eager to get it and talk about it. We wanted to. Uh, it was so much to talk about. So hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one. All right, and heal up fast, Alan. I will. Take care, guys. See ya.